PDGA has announced the official rule changes for the 2024 season, and oh boy, is it going to piss off so many people. I'm Swiss Cheese, the one with all the holes in his game. Alongside me, the one who doesn't, we got Jefferson from the Disc Golf World. We're going to break down some of the important rule changes for next season. Also, before you angrily comment about a rule I misinterpreted, let's not forget you could have wasted your own time reading the damn PDGA article, but instead, I made this for you, so you're welcome. I will start it off with what is labeled a major change, because that makes sense to me. Rule 803.01 has always been one of those rules that I heard professionals complain about the most, firsthand too, when I was Drew Gibson's caddy, until he fired me. Before, players were not allowed to move obstacles that were in their run-up. For example, if a big-ass pine cone, let's say at W.R. Jackson, was in the middle of a player's run-up, they were not allowed to kick it out the way. Yes, per the rules, they had to risk stepping on it, since moving it would be considered moving an obstacle. I'm sure the number of pros just at Champions Cup was enough to have this rule changed. It now says a player may move casual obstacles that are on the playing surface farther from the target than the front edge of the lie. Casey White even explains why the rule is easily bypassed by pros, showing the flaw in the rule. Knew that that rule change was in effect now, Mm -hmm. and I had been taking my time in practice to clear out every single lie. And then at the players meeting, Robert Leonard was like, so we're going to talk about this rule that you can't clear anything and you have to do this and you have to do that. And literally at the players meeting, I don't remember if it was me or somebody else, but they were like, well, if I can get a contact point from six feet behind if i were to lay down <laughs> nobody can tell me i'm not going to throw this shot it's laying true. down right yeah and they're like oh like robert was like yeah you kind of got us there so i'm on lead card round two i have a shot that requires a run-up for a big sidearm and i look straight at rebecca duffy the marshal and i said i'm about to lay down and clear a freaking six foot runway here and she goes go for it and i go do a do a plank i look at my card say this is good and i clear a whole runway and i proceed to absolutely park it for birdie the thing is, is say I only clear like a two feet long runway for my run up because that's where my lie is. But when I back up to run up, I'm kicking pine cone after pine cone to the side and I'm clearing away anyway, just because I'm backing up from my lie. Like I've done it. I've seen people do it. I've done it very consciously being like, eh, I'm not really in the mood to lay down. So as I walk behind my like behind my lie, I'm just going to kind of just shuffle my feet and slide these obstacles out of the way. And I just think that that was the flaw in the rule was Mm -hmm. I didn't have to lay down every single time. I just had to look casual. Crazy enough, Drew was on Casey's card in round one at Champions Cup. While caddying, I heard Casey as well as other pros complain about this rule. Everything Casey said was true, and I saw others using the same strategy. Good rule change for anyone who cares about the safety of the players, but apparently that's not the PDGA. This next rule change caused the most uproar, and honestly, from what I saw, it created a pretty 50-50 reaction overall. Players are now required to keep score for the entire group. No more nose goes, phones coincidentally not being charged or having service, or my all-time favorite response, I'm not doing it. Baller move that you won't catch my ass doing. No longer is that an option as the rule now reads, each player must keep an independent scorecard recording scores after each hole for the entire group. A player who refuses to keep a score may be subject to disqualification. The PDJ is no longer messing around, but don't worry, the responsibility can still be passed down to designated caddies. So if you've ever wanted to be a pro caddy, I'm sure pros will be taking applications very soon. Hey, maybe you should just ask Drew for your job back. The rules put emphasis on each player recording the score for every player after each hole, but I will not be surprised if some players copy the scorecards like a middle schooler who forgot to do his homework. All players are responsible for submitting their respective copy within 30 minutes of the group finishing their round. A player who does not submit their scorecard on time will receive two penalty strokes. For those wondering what happens if one person in their card submits an incorrect score, it will only impact the player who wrote the score wrong. I don't play tournaments, so I really don't have any sort of opinion on this rule change. As an awkward person, I think it's a good thing to remove any sort of tension on cards. But for the pro scene, I think we're going to start seeing lots more caddies that their sole job will be to take care of the score. Or at least this will open more opportunities for kids to caddy for some pros. Or let's be honest, middle-aged dudes trying to caddy for cat merch. There were some changes and introductions for the playoffs also. TDs now have the option to utilize an aggregate playoff, which is a type of sudden death playoff where their competitors play a set of six or fewer holes, which have been announced by the TD, where the lowest score on all the holes wins the playoff. Players who are tied after an aggregate playoff proceed to the standard sudden death playoff rules on those same holes, unless a different set of holes has been announced by the TD. 
I can't see any TD being brave enough to change things up for a playoff for pure fear of how the disc golf community will react. As dramatic as a change this new rule sounds for the pro level and fan consumption, I really don't see it coming into play. The only argument for bringing the aggregate into the pro side would be seeing more disc golf as always a positive, or having the ability to still have the finish on 18 at all times. The entire setup of these events revolve around finishing on hole 18. That's where the bulk of the fan seating, podiums, score tables, and cameras for post-round interviews are all located. While I'm on this real quick... Post-round interviews saw its own rule change also, as post-round interviews will not happen prior to finalizing cards, which I support. I would rather have player raw emotion and celebration than a mic shoved in their face answering the same redundant questions of every winner. Now, back to the aggregate. Does it make sense on a logistical standpoint for TDs to run this format and finish where they always intended? Yes, it does. I just don't see how TD or the Pro Tour would want to take the excitement of every shot being important and crucial off the coverage, just to finish where you want. The bulk of the playoffs really don't last beyond one or two holes, mostly due to the pressure that each shot carries on the player, resulting in unforced errors. For every Disc Mania Open, we have a Portland Open, Mid-America, Emporia, Throw Pink, and Jonesboro. Why remove the emotions and excitement that hinge on every single throw, which will always have fans in attendance and on edge of their seats at home, just to make the coverage more convenient? No TD worth their salt would ever consider this, would they? And if so, I can't wait to rip them apart on Twig that week and in the future. The pace of play would be addressed after lots of discussions throughout the season of players taking extraordinarily long. And even though there are specific players that constantly get called out for this, being at these events, it's way more common from disc golfers than you think. I mean, not as much as Cupcake takes, but still too long. The new rules establish the concept of putting a group on the clock. What defines being on the clock? I could read all the rules, but I'm just going to pop up the words on the screen so you can pause and read. Or you can just listen to my quick summary. Basically, players need to play quickly enough that it does not disrupt the cards playing behind them. 2024 will be the year of undue delay because they are clearly pushing that term even though it's incredibly vague. Importantly, on the clock means that a tournament official will follow the group and actively time each player to ensure that every player is playing with the allotted time. I do like that they added the players must be alerted that they are on the clock, so it's not a surprise, because who would think an undisclosed official stroking people would cause problems? When the group is no longer causing undue delay, they come off the clock, which means the official will no longer be timing their play. The PTGA is trying to fight against slow players, which is fair. I think there have been problems in the past, but I'm calling it now, there will be problems with officials and being on the clock. We had the opportunity to talk to Gannon Burr earlier this season, and he addressed his issue on the rule. I've asked even PGA officials, and they're all, they're all just, they all have a different answer. They're like, oh yeah, it's when you grab your disc out of your bag, it's when you step up to your lie, so when you mark your disc, and like if, if you guys as a PDJ can't have a specific answer for yourself, then like it, you shouldn't be, it shouldn't be such a big issue. And like if you just push it even back to a minute, it's not going to change. Like no one's going to purposely take a minute. All I ask is when does the clock start? Now I don't know in what capacity or if it will be all that serious, but there's no way we go the entire 2024 season without this rule coming up. One rule that I'm glad didn't make the cut for the 2024 season was having to be a PDGA member to play in seed tiers. The only tournament I play is one seed tier every year, and there's no way I'm paying $50 just to play one event. It feels counterproductive to me to force disc golfers to pay to play events when we're seeing a decline in more competitive players already. Why hinder away any more players at this point in time? Or at least... Start giving more perks to players that sign up because ratings aren't cutting it anymore. And less than 13% of your members vote for elections. I might just be stubborn, but at this point, not a single person could convince me to sign up. And I don't know many people who love disc golf more than me. I really hope the PDGA is starting to realize they can't do the same every year and expect different results. And if you want to point out the boost of members in 2020, you must have forgotten that was the year Brody Smith started playing and brought all 2 million fans to courses across the country. Those are some of the biggest rule changes for the 2024 disc golf season. Let us know which change was your favorite in the comment section below. And if you want to know what is making Paul McBeth go after other pros, check out the video here.